New York is a pizza lover's dream come true, and there's many spots that don't get the attention they deserve. Today, we're spotlighting pizzerias that need to be on your radar, and we'll tell you why they're must visits. Hope you brought your appetites. Let's eat. We've got Greg, native New Yorker and food guide, and our first stop, Amore Pizza. I mean, this is as old school as they come. Absolutely, this spot has been around for a long time in the strip mall out here in Flushing. If you're a Queens native of a certain age, you remember this spot had an arcade in the strip mall, classic. All right, I'm excited, let's get in there. <laughs> no apple pay, it's good to know. Look how thin crust it is right there. They have all those pies yeah. ready to go, always fresh pies. High turnover. Yeah, good sign. Mm -hmm. Here we go, three slices to go, please. It's as efficient as they come, I have to say. Mm -hmm. They're really just churning out slices all day long, all night, always fresh. I think for most people, when they envision having a slice in New York, you know, being in a strip mall parking lot probably doesn't come to mind. I think Flushing, you think of the Chinatown. Um, this is really the edge, more near College Point. Um, this is an institutional. Amore is very famous here in Queens. Queens locals favorite. I mean, let's break this down. You pointed it out inside. This is as thin a slice as they come. Mm -hmm. I like the balance of cheese and sauce here, though it does get messy. The cheese easily will fall off. Uh, I think it's also because it's so fresh. All right, let's do it. Mm. Every pie is fresh, every slice is fresh because they're churning them out nonstop. That's the first thing I noticed. Nice and crunchy, crispy. It's like crispy, but somehow a little soft at the same yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. It's interesting texture. I like the sauce isn't too tangy, isn't too like zesty. It really complements the cheese quite well. And just, yeah, the crust, yeah, it's just nice and light. You know, I've only said this about a few other spots that we've done videos of, but if you were to ask like, what is a prototypical New York slice, I think this is up there in the conversation. This is, this reminds me of pizza I grew up eating in Queens. Very classic example. I think when people think of Queens, they think of like the diversity, the street food, and Jackson Heights, and Flushing, the Chinatown, but pizza's a bit of an afterthought for this borough for a lot of people, no? Oh, absolutely. I think Queens pizza is very slept on, not just because I'm from, born and raised here, yeah. but I really think it's the truth. I think part of it is also because a lot of these spots are spread out. Like, this spot here is pretty far off the beaten track. This is more of a destination location. Right by LaGuardia, like that, the planes are literally taking off. You can see one right there united every two minutes here. I have to tell you, just enjoying this slice here justifies my reasons for living in New York City. Just finding pizza like this, random strip mall. New York pizza is like one of the top five reasons to move here or to visit here. This is the kind of spot that I think you'd be very lucky if you grew up near here. Yeah, I'd be here all the time if I live closer. I do come here when I'm in the area. There's a classic old school bowling alley just down the block. I don't know how much longer it's gonna last. Whitestone Lanes. I love coming here before or after. Huh. Just eating your pizza in the parking lot feel like a gourmet experience. People who come to New York, you might not even think we have parking lots, we do. They come <laughs> to these parts of Queens. Queens is huge. It's like we're doing a pizza review video in uh, Florida, not New York. <laughs> the pizza's gonna be way better here than Florida, sorry guys. You bet. <laughs> Greg, Louis is the kind of spot that you want to support because of who the owners are and what they mean to the community. Absolutely, they do so much in the community. They were here during COVID. Elmer Hospital just down the block was uh, really the epicenter of COVID here in uh, New York City. They also had a very heroic act last year. One was being robbed outside the shop and they came and intervened and uh, got stabbed in the process. Thankfully, they're okay now, survived, but incredible, heroic. We haven't even got to the food yet. That's just who they are. All right, real New York heroes inside. Let's go. What's up, Lou? What's up guys, how are you? There's very few pizzerias that are still owner-operated, especially in the city. There's not so much anymore. You might have more in Jersey and other states that really put their heart and soul into what they do. I'm here 90 hours a week. I've given my whole life. I've given my blood for this place and for my neighbors. What do you think this spot means to the community? Oh, we're a stable backbone, no question. I've known Greg for many, many years. I've known pretty much everybody who's ever gone to my restaurant. Which type of slice you guys most well known for? Oh, we're very well known for our grandma slice. What you see here is a Sicilian style pie. It's fresh mozzarella, plum tomato, garlic, basil, parmesan cheese. I've seen a lot of imitation grandmas, and they don't, frankly, they don't come close. Three through grandmas? Patented move. Oh yeah. I have to say that the food looks fantastic, but talking to Louie, the owner, like that's a New York experience. Yeah, I mean, this is really like, I would say the definition of a neighborhood joint here. Greg, do we dare say one of the best grandma slices in the city that you probably haven't heard of? I might say the best grandma slice city I've ever heard of. I mean, this is personally my favorite. Um, I've been coming here since they opened 14 years. I, I get this all the time. I literally come in here, even if I'm ordering a steak, a salmon, a pasta, I always have to get a slice of grandma no matter what. I break this down first. Tell us why it's different than a, a typical Sicilian. Yeah, so if you're not familiar 
grandma slice. It's a big New York thing. Um, a lot of times you see them much thinner. This one's actually a bit thicker. And when you hear thick, you might think of it in a bad way. It's not. The crust is very airy. It's light. Um, there's fresh mozzarella on top. There's plum tomatoes, basil, there's garlic, there's parmesan. So all those flavors fused together. I gotta tell you, I've, I've never seen a grandma slice that looked quite like this one. That's a compliment. Like I feel like a lot of care went into the presentation. It's, it's so easy to hold. No folding required. Nope. If, you know, if your typical New York slice isn't your thing, it's a good option. All right, let's rock. That's fantastic. You know, I've eaten this countless times. Just like that, that creamy fresh mozzarella really stands out. Those chunky tomatoes, that fresh basil, that bit of garlic and Parmesan all melding together. It's just like explosion of flavor in every bite. I mean, you took the words right out of my mouth. I needed two bites to really figure out why I love this so much. All those things going on at once. I'm a big fan of like herby flavors. You really get that here a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I really like fresh basil and like fresh herbs. Yeah. I thought this was gonna be way heavier, way thicker, just looking at it, but no. Telling Greg off camera, it's like going to Luigi's and uh, in Park Slope, talking to Gio there. Same thing here with Louie. Great pizza, great owners, support their communities. And I can just tell there's consistency behind every slice here when you come. I can vouch for that. I mean, I've eaten countless grandmas. It's always on point. Interesting that this actually feels like a restaurant too. It's gotten to the point where when I come here and if I just order pizza, it's awkward for me. I, I have to order it this year. The food here is so good, it's really great value too. So you don't even know what you like better here, the pizza or the dinner. Beautiful thing about it, I just get this for an appetizer as I wait for my food. <laughs> get best of both worlds every That's time. the way to do it. And the fact that I have a ribeye steak, like pretty incredible. That's one of the best steaks I've ever had in New York. What's the, the ribeye cost here, you know? 25 bucks. New York's best steaks you've never heard of, uh. <laughs> Video idea. If you enjoy food adventures like this and you want Greg's local insights when you come to New York, check out Greg's food tour linked down below in the description. I have had many of you tell me it was the highlight of your trip to the city. Check it out. All right, Greg, from the old school to the new school, we've got Mano's Pizzeria established 2021. Why is this on the video? Um, this is really, I think, a fusion of like old school, like heritage, and but new school elevated ingredients and technique. Uh, really big fan of the spot. I'm really curious. I, I've heard good things. Yeah. We got uh, two upside downs and uh, two Mano Palos. It's like Christmas came early with these colors. I'm very, very excited for this. We're at an, a fine dining Italian establishment outside. <laughs> you don't usually see Fantastic. these kind of tablecloths on the street. I kind of like it. This place is so good that DoorDash delivery drivers will eat it first inside, then bring you your pie, okay? It's a good signal. Look at this, this colorful display. Mm -hmm. Tell everybody what we've got. Upside down square. So this one's got the cheese first, sauce on top, a little bit of grated Parmesan. Looks like some oregano as well. Very airy. That's that's the, really the first thing that jumps out at you. It's a very airy square slice. And then you got this is the Manopella. It's actually named for the last name of the owner. Before we even get into the ingredients, just look how puffy this Cornicioni is on the edge. This one is uh, vodka sauce, pesto, and chicken cutlet. You know, I don't usually do chicken pizza, but I'll make exception for this. People have never ordered this in the city before. Ellen B. Spumoni Gardens, they ask you if you want a corner or a middle, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do middle, actually. Yeah, that's it, corner. Let's, let's give it a go. Try this. Mm. Mm. Tomato sauce, just that has a bold flavor in your face. It does. For someone like me, that's really into a saucy pizza, this is good. Just the first thing you notice, that shatteringly crisp crust. Unbelievable how crunchy that bottom is. Mm. I've had L&B Simone Gardens before. Everyone says best upside down slice in the city. I'm gonna go with this. I like this better. What do you think? It's amazing. Uh, I think it's, they're both different. Uh, if I were to choose which one to eat more often, I would say this one. I like the airier, lighter dough. I think the tomato sauce is sharper as well. It's just, you know, it's more, take it to the next level. Like LMB is old school, but this is more like highly elevated ingredients, fermentation. No disrespect to LMB, this is just a little bit more my style. Now the owner didn't want to be on camera, but he was telling us off camera that he pays a lot of attention to this dough. And you can immediately tell that with any bite. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Ridgewood, Queens is exactly thought of as like a big food neighborhood. I think more in recent years, more places yeah. have been opening up. I think this is a destination worthy pizzeria. Look at all these crumbs, how crunchy mm -hmm. this is. It's a very sturdy slice, like zero flop, considering how many ingredients we've got on it too. Let's give us a go. Mm. Mm. 
That pesto just balances everything out. Pesto and vodka sauce, nice combination here. I like how thick it is on top too. You know, sometimes it should be like a little bit of a drizzle. It's a really thick pesto. Yeah. But I'll even tell you that the chicken cutlet is well seasoned and marinated as well. It's not just an afterthought here. I think you could put a lot of these ingredients in a sandwich. It'll be fantastic too. Same wavelength there. <laughs> yeah. What can't you do with a good chicken cutlet? I bet you he would make great bread. Like how skilled he is at making this yeah. dough, I bet you he would make a great sandwich bread. The dough is so well made and fermented that you don't feel so heavy in your stomach. That's the thing about all these new school shops is that way. This has been one of my favorite slices of the day, I gotta tell you right here. You know what it reminds me of? Similar new school vibe, Lucia's Avenue X in Brooklyn. Old school inspiration, new school technique, and kind of elevated fermentation, dough ingredients. I agree with you there. Check that out in our Brooklyn Pizza Guide. Did a really good video last year, including Lucia's. I think New Yorkers are getting pickier about pizza as well. I can't just open up a dollar shop and expect people to show up now. When you have pizza like this in New York, I don't even want to waste my stomach space on dollar slices, I'll tell you. It's funny because most of the native New Yorkers I meet, they want nothing to do with dollar pizza. <laughs> I get it, trust me. You know why? Because old school good pizza like we had like at Amore, for example, that used to be a dollar for a slice back in the 90s. You're right. I don't, if only still was, right? But. Jersey boy here. We're sitting outside of Satriali's here in the Sopranos, all right? Kind of reminds me of that, because like with the, uh, the tablecloths, it's kind of like a chilly uh, fall day, you know? Kind of brings it that vibe. <laughs> he was a little cloudy out. <laughs> Dave Portnoy did not give this spot a very high review. But he's from Boston. I respect what the guy does, but I don't always agree in his reviews. I, I think this place deserves a higher score, personally. Yeah. Mono's is a destination. You travel for these sites, as I'll tell you. I gotta tell you from the outside, if I didn't see that pizza sign, I would not think so was a pizza shop. <laughs> Very low key. Philomena's is one of your favorite spots in the whole city. It really is. Yeah, I've been coming here, I think they've been open about four or five years now. Um, they got a really nice variety of pizza here. The dough is really some next level. I'm excited to share it with you guys. Let's get it, man. What's up? How are you? Good, how are you doing? Uh, I wanna do one of the Jersey Shores okay. and a classic. You got it. Do the same. So uh, we put a little extra attention in detail into the dough. We ferment our dough 72 hours so that way it releases all natural enzymes in the flour so you can digest a little bit better. And we also put a little extra water into the dough so it gives a nice light and airiness to it. And now my mom has a problem with digesting dough so I thought it would be like something that would save her from not eating bad bread or bad pizza, something she could digest and she can digest my bread in my uh, my pizza dough. You see me here at the two o'clock in the morning, nine o'clock in the morning, I'm here all the time just touching this stuff. I make the square dough and a round dough. You can taste the difference in the dough, it, it adds to the flavor of the actual pizza itself. Dude, thank you so thank much. You. All right. And hearing Dave talk about pizza, that's like a professor. He really is so passionate about dough. Like, when he says he's here at 2 a.m., he's here at 2 a.m. Jersey Shore square slice. I mean, Greg, this is basically like a sausage and pepper hero. In yeah, pizza on, form. On a pizza form, and this really light square dough, um, topped it off a little grated Parmesan fresh. Uh, one of my favorite slices here to get. You know, the square is always a must order here, and uh, I think this is my favorite of the squares. Besides the special vegan square that they don't have today. I've actually never seen a slice quite like this one before, so I'm excited. Let's try this. Yeah. light and airy crust, as I already knew. But it's wild getting that sausage and pepper and onion in one bite on a pizza, wow. This is different, but in a really good way. Yeah, I like the combo of the spicy and the sweet peppers, and then the onion, you have all that crunch to go with the crunch of the crust itself. I don't know what I'm admiring more, the pizza or the sausage and pepper flavor. It's like a tie right now. You can tell Dave knows his dough just after two bites, like I can tell. I'd say the lightest square slice I've ever eaten is from, from Dave. And don't sleep on the grated Parmesan cheese. It's like the cherry on top of this amazing slice. This smells like a mix of the Jersey Shore Boardwalk and the Feast of San Gennaro. And if you can visualize that and smell that, you're gonna love this pizza. All right, Greg, slice number six of the day. I mean, if this wasn't my job, I would say this is probably not the healthiest idea for one day, but we're, we're troopers. I was just here a couple weeks ago. I ate five slices in one sitting, <laughs> and I didn't feel gross afterwards. So that's all you need to know about filling is that you can eat as much pizza as you want here and not feel gross afterwards. That's how well fermented the dough is. That's how light it is. Uh, that's how much attention and care is put into the dough. Grated Parmesan, a uh, little olive oil on top, and fresh basil, which I love bringing it all together. 
You know, the cheese, tomato sauce, a little tangier flavor, I have to say, compared to some of the other spots we've been to, but I'm liking it. I think that grated Parmesan really comes in, adds that nice layer of umami to this, and a little bit of the olive oil, that fresh basil. And then the crust itself, actually with a pizza like this, I like to eat the edge, kind of early on. A lot of love goes into these slices. Man, we've been saying that all day, but most of these spots anyway. It reminds me of like an old school slice growing up, but elevated, you have that more of the sourdough flavor. What do you think of Sunnyside in general as a food spot? Uh, I think Sunnyside's a pretty underrated food neighborhood. There's like yeah. quite a amount of diversity here. I mean, this is one of my favorite pizzerias in the whole city. There's a really cool Bolivian restaurant nearby. There's a Lebanese restaurant, there's Turkish, there's Romanian, Ottawaian restaurant over here. You have a lot around here. That's a great thing about coming to Queens on a food tour. Yeah, you can find like amazing pizza, which she doesn't get enough credit for, but then Latin America and Asia got you covered on all fronts. It's the European, you name it. Like, I'm, I'm not a vegan, yeah. but I come here <laughs> just for that slice. Yeah. You want to you say anything on our video? You want to say hi? Yeah. Wanna... <laughs> Actually, I was in the bar school once. This guy is like the quintessential pizza master maker, working his butt off. He's making dough every freaking night of the week. But it's legit. It's one of the best pizza places in Sunnyside. And, and honestly, in Queens, 100%. Yeah. I mean, like, it rivals the Brooklyn slices. Sunnyside's the best. But... Now that you've seen off the radar spots in Queens, why don't we explore the pizza scene in Brooklyn? In this video, we show you some of Brooklyn's most iconic spots. Head here next if you're hungry.